I'm Chef Carol, and this is my first sewing tutorial. Normally, I find tutorials for my patterns on YouTube. When I searched for Vogue R11843, I couldn't find any videos. This pattern offered several challenges for me. First, it is an advanced pattern. Second, it contained techniques I had never used. I believed I had to have this dress and decided to invite anyone else interested in making this dress to take the journey with me. I believe that failure is not an option. Let's get started. I begin part two at instruction number three. It says front and back. Stay stitch front along straight notched edge above the waistline as shown and then ease stitch front among curved edge between notches as shown. And after you do that, you're going to stitch the center front seam ending at the large dot. If you've marked your patterns, you'll see that we're going to do the curved stitch on piece number one and then we're going to do the straight stitching. I don't know if you can see that. We're going to do the straight stitching along the long edge of piece number one. So if you've marked it, you should be able to just do that straight stitch. And what I'm going to suggest you do is do all of your stay stitching on the front piece as I have here and also on your back pieces so you can get those things out of the way. Now you'll notice that on the back piece, you only stay stitching along the longest side. Once you've done that and you completed your stay stitching, when you stitch together this front piece, you're also going to go ahead and press it out. Now generally when I'm pressing, I want to get as sharp an edge as possible. So I will use my pressing claw and I'll use this ham. And after I steam press it, I'll tap that seam to get it to stay flat. Also, once I've completed that, I will steam it on the reverse side, doing the same thing with my pressing claw. I'll press that seam again and I will pound it with my ham. And that gives me a nice clean edge. And one of the things that I've learned is that pressing as you go along creates a far more beautiful garment. We're going to do the stay stitching on item three, then we're going to sew that front together between the large dots, which will be from the bust point down to the hem of the, of the garment. We're going to press it. We're also going to do the stay stitching on piece number two, and then we'll come back here. I'm not going to sew along on the machine because this is an advanced item. And before you would tackle a garment like this, basic sewing is something that you already know. So there's no reason for you to watch me sew on the machine. Meet you back here. Our next step after you've done all of your state stitching is now going to go to number four. It says pin upper front and side sections, right sides together, matching notches and large dots. Adjust the ease and base the clippings as necessary. Stitch upper sections from shoulder to large dot. If you have all your markings in place, you should have a large dot here and a large dot here. What you're going to do is bring those together and starting from here, we're going to start to pin the upper front and the side front sections. Make sure you're matching your notches and you're just going to start to pin and use as many pins as you need because we are going to be coming around a curve and we want to make sure that the fabric is going to be smooth on both sides with no extra little tucks. And we'll be doing this for the back side as well. So we're actually going to jump from four to eight in terms of doing this pinning of the front and side pieces, except on the back, you're going to do the upper back and back side. Here I am now coming to the curve and I'm going to ease this in and I will use as many pins as I think necessary to make sure that this eases in with no puckers. Sometimes these pins are supposed to be for knits and they don't go through easily. Okay, so we're coming down to the finish line here. You should find some notches right about now. 
And you're going to pin this all the way to the top, knowing that that point is going to be part of the 5 8 inch seam. So I'm just going to put a pin right in there. And then I'll just ease this one in. And this is basically so that when I start sewing, I will have accounted for any folds that might be there. Do this for the upper front and also do it for your two upper back pieces. And once that's completed, we'll meet back here. Once you have completed your pinning on both the front and the back, you're going to take it to your machine and go ahead and sew those seams in, making sure that you go down as far as those dots and to the top near the shoulder piece. So go ahead and get that done and we'll be meeting right back here. At this point, you should have sewn all of your seams, press them out on the front and the back, pieces one and pieces two. So the next thing we're going to do is come to step five. To make pleats in front on outside, crease along solid lines, bring creases to center dashed line, matching large dots based close to crease edges. That is what we have done here. Well, here we have our center line with the dots. And this is what we have on the reverse side. Now on the front side, item number six is telling us on the inside, stitch each side of pleat from folds to large dot, keeping the dress free. That just means we're not going to sew through. What I'm showing you here is the front piece. And if you have your pattern, you'll remember the lines on the front were extended here. It says stitching line, so it's, it's extended here. So now that becomes this fold. So I'm going right under that fold and I'm going to space very close to this edge, just a basting stitch. So that completes step number five. Now I'm just going to turn this over And here's that center line. Here's the center line with the large dot. Now I'm just going to pin this. Of course, what we're going to do is sew from here to here, and then we're going to sew from here to here. And the beauty of the underlining is that once we've completed that, we're actually going to 